Okay, okay, okay. Hey, yo, G back. Yo. G back. You got the shit sideways. You gotta, you gotta line it up when you just like, you know what I'm saying? You we know, doing yo, it like this? Yo, coochie back. <laughs> you gotta adjust your shit, you know? Little cat with your shit. We, we good, we good, we good money now? <laughs> We got oh, money shit. now, family. What yeah, up, Joe? Right. I can just walk away now, man. Like, I ain't even got to participate in this shit no more. I put my brother <laughs> on the screen. I told you I got you, baby. Damn, g rap man. Let me tell you something, man. I love you, my brother. Uh, I love you, too. You already know all, what it is. Joe, we go back. First of all, let me tell you, I never forget the day. You came when I did my first album, and you got on a song for me, and, and you always been a rap god, but you actually, it was the first time that Puerto Rican kid doing this thing, you came to the studio for me. I didn't even pay you, G-Rap. You came out of nah. love, and I got to tell you, I, I, I just can't make it up to you, you know what I'm saying, for, for, for like what you did for me, man. Thank you so much, my brother. All the time, Joe, of course, man. You're very welcome, bro. You man, know what I mean? don't want to fuck, fuck shit up, but you got like this echo. We got this echo. Is anybody else listening to it or something? Nah, maybe it's because I'm on a Bluetooth. So hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this this legendary G-Rap, because I don't believe I've seen you in an interview in, in, in quite some time. It's been a minute. It's been a minute, man. And uh, why is that? You don't really fuck with the... You just that you're not into that? No, it's just that uh, right now, Joe, I'm I'm so submerged into um doing my next project. You know what I'm saying? That I, I just really just pick, choose, and refuse. You know what I'm saying? Right now, at this moment. You know That's what I'm a beautiful thing that you're in a position where you can choose whatever you want to do. Um, and what you working on a new project, new music? Working on a new project, man. Working on another album. My brother, man, let me tell you something. Yo, G-Rap, you're everybody's favorite rapper. How, at the time you with the dot, you, I believe uh, you guys are the first dynasty in hip-hop where it goes into the Juice Crew, where you got, uh, I actually spoke to Bismarck E today. His wife called me from the hospital, and you know I've been checking up on him, and and today right. he spoke back to me and I told him how much I love him. And um, but you got Bismarck, you got Kane, you got Shantae, you got Craig G, you got Molly Ma, who's possibly one of the greatest producers of all time. How did how did you get down with Juice Crew? I got down with Juice Crew being um do the do the relationship I have with Eric B. And um and Eric B. Plug me, uh, actually plug me with DJ Polo. You know what I'm saying? Me and Polo from the same hood in, 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 in um, Corona, Queens. You know what I'm saying? And I knew of Polo because Polo had a, uh, he had like a, a borough name. You know what I'm saying? A name throughout all the borough. <clears throat> so I, I knew who he was by name. And he, he was, uh, he heard of me too. You know what I'm saying? The little young nigga um, from the block that spit. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, but we never formally met until Eric B, you know, introduced us and shit, and, and that was the plug right there, Joe. And so Eric B plugged you in with the Juice Crew. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Well, he plugged me with Polo, and just by him doing that, <clears throat> that was the link. Cause you know, uh, Polo and Molly, you know, what I'm saying they go back a long time. I think they went to high school together. You know, what I'm saying so they already had a relationship. So when he plugged me with Polo. That, that just set everything in motion. You know, it's crazy, right? So, so then well, who you meet after that? Fly Ty? You meet Mr. Magic? Like... <clears throat> I met Fly Ty. Yep, and then, yeah, you're right. And then Magic. <clears throat> and then I would start bumping into Bismarck, Shantae, Shan. You know what I'm saying? Me and Shan click real easy because Shan was, you know, Shan is in the bridge and shit, and I have family in the bridge. So I used to go out there before and niggas was doing any records or anything. I used to hang out there. You know what I mean? It's crazy, G-Rap, because, I mean, you know, I, I don't give a fuck. You know, I ain't got a lot of people, but 
I remember before I knew you, I always thought you was from Queensbridge, but I don't know exactly. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you was from Corona. Mm -hmm. I used to drive in my cars with, with my systems. This is when I was still in the street hustling through Queensbridge, right. bumping your shit, hoping I bumped into Coogee Rap. That's, that's how <laughs> ill it was. Got you, got you. No, nah, no doubt. <clears throat> no doubt, Joe. So somebody like you, who has pretty much influenced everybody in the game, you know, we call you uh, your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. Who inspired you at an early age? Who said? Who made you say, yo, I'm going to be a lyricist. I'm going to be nicer than everybody. It's a few cats. It's a few cats to put the battery in my back, though. And um, I would say right at, right at the top of that list was Melly Mel. Wow. Mo D. Wow. Grandmaster Kaz and my boy Silver Fox from the Fantasy Three. You know what I'm saying? Which a lot of people ain't know about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I never heard um, of Silver Fox, and I think I heard about everybody. So where he was from, Fantastic Three? I know the four Fantastic Five, but it was a Fantastic Three? Uh, What was it? What was it? Fantastic? Yeah, Fantastic Three. Exactly. Because it was Fantastic Romantic. That's where they had a group in the Bronx called the Fantastic Romantic. That's where the first. Yeah, yeah I, I, I know. I remember them. That I was remember the them. first Puerto Rican rapper, Ruby D, that yeah. ever rapped. So they was from my hood. Um, So Melly Mel is on so many people's lists. When I bring them on here, they be like, yo, Melly Mel. Um, your wordplay, your style, I believe you, you created that style, which others, with no disrespect, the Nas's, the big puns, Eminem, uh, we talking about big pun, Nas, Eminem, just to name a few that adopted your style, turned it into their style, and they kept rocking, but um, what was it like with, you know, with, when, when you did, it, it, when you doing your thing, do you know, like, I'm the best guy on, on earth right now? <laughs> you know what? <clears throat> I know my capability. I always knew my capability, Joe, but I never got comfortable with, with uh, um, just absorbing that shit in my head so much, like, yo, I'm the best. And, and and when you give yourself just just that much space, then you always give yourself enough room to keep pushing and push more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when you feel like you're already there all the time, then you're not you're not pushing as hard. Cause I watched you even when you came on my first album. I think we did Bad Bad Man, and you was ten thousand years better than me. I seen you still yeah. busting your bubble. Still concentrate, going hard, and you chitty chitty bang bang coming out of same same <laughs> fucking brain pain when I let the fucking I'm like, what the I'm like busting jacket and you you coming with this shit and I'm like yo this guy's serious. But um, you know what, Joe? You you came a long way, bro. You came from um being the influence of a a raw a raw talent as myself. You know what I'm saying? So. You was you was um attracted to the gritty shit and, and to um that raw unpolished talent. Like just like I was. You know what I'm saying? Even though I like some dudes that, that put hits out there and shit like that. But for you for you to be so inspired by um a motherfucker that sound like he came out the basement every time. For for somebody that was inspired by that, yo, you you fucking learn a formula. You know how to put those fucking records together. That's gonna take that shit to where you needed to uh, where you needed to go, and still and still be an attraction to the streets. You know what I'm saying? So, Yo, G, a lot of credit there, bro. Man, my brother, let me ask you something. Was there any other rapper that thought they could fuck with you? Like, at the, was there anybody who you always thought, "Yo, maybe this guy's coming for me," or does he think he could fuck with me? Is there in in the nicest way, not in the messy way? Well, I mean, that was never voiced. That was never voiced to me. You know what I'm saying? Out loud. You know what I'm saying? But I'm sure, I'm sure there was always silent competition. You know what I'm saying? Like I came out around the era of some real elite dudes. You know what I'm saying? Some 
<laughs> some fantastic cities. To me, people say my era where I came out, Jay Z, Nas. I, I, to me, your era is the golden age. Th that's the best era of hip hop. Personally, me as a fan, right? Right. Like, I, right. I, I thought that was the best era. Uh, I remember one time I brought Big Pun to rap for you and Nas. It was me, you, right. and Nas. And I said, Big Pun. And the nigga, he was fatter than me and shit. And y'all was like, and you was like, yo, he rap? And I was like, yeah, he gonna rap. And I'm gonna tell you, uh, this, this is ill. I've told this story before, but maybe not to you. That day right. when he saw us, da 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 And I'm watching Nas, like, and then you, and then you like, and then G-Rap style, after he rapped, you was like, word, word, yo. Yo, word, yo, like he, and I knew at that point right there, I knew at that moment, I had uh, the best talent. I knew like, oh, I gotta go all, I was right. I gotta go all the way, because to me, you ran the era lyrically, and then you handed over the uh, baton to Nas, right? That's how I felt. You know, Nas right. came up out of Queens, similar styles, incredible, God MC. And, um, but then you handed it to him, and right there, I got pun to rap for y'all for the first time. And right. I seen both your eyes naturally, like, oh shit. This fat Puerto Rican dude is nasty. I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta spend my last dollar. I gotta, I gotta throw the kitchen sink at it. You remember that time? I don't recall that time, but I recall, I recall meeting Pun in your store. Mm. In your store, I came through, I came through there with my man C, and, and um, and you was in the store, and 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 that's when I'm, that's why I'm. I first remember meeting Pun. I'm not saying that the time you talking about didn't happen, but we talking no, more than thirty. No, we talking, yeah, we talking. Yeah, G. Yeah, G, we talking decades lie. ago. I never lied. G, I don't. Not, not, I've never lied not, to you in my life, huh? I. That's why I said I ain't saying it didn't happen. I'm just saying, yeah, I probably just don't recall that time off the, you know, <laughs> off the rip like that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I said. I said. Oh, one of the greatest collaborations, speaking to Nas, was the Fast Life. Right, right. It was production-wise, I remember the video with the spiral staircase behind you. It was like, but even though Nas is the new king and we saluting the young Don and Illmatic, it's a classic. G Rap was on that track, so legendary that <laughs> you might have got him on there. And 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 I say that beyond respectfully. But uh, what was that like? You two collaborating, the new king of Queens of the, of the rap game, <coughs> you being the king. Like, what was that like? I, I was I was proud of Nas, and I was mad happy for Nas because before Nas even got put out there. I was trying to get Nas put on. You know what I'm saying? I heard, I seen the potential in Nas and I, and I knew he was out of here as soon as as soon as the people heard him, as soon as the world heard Nas, I knew he was out of here. You know what I'm saying? So I was shopping Nas um material to like Death Jam shit like that. So Nas, so Nas was signed to you or he was like No, he wasn't signed. We we didn't get to that level. It shit happened so quick with Nas, it didn't even get to that level yet. You know what I'm saying? Trying to help um, him as a fellow Queens guy. Absolutely, I was I was trying to help him. I wanted to see him get put on. You know what I'm saying? And um, and I shopped them around. The Nas? It was the live at the barbecue, or you knew him around before that time. I knew him. I knew him through a uh, lost professor. You know what I'm saying? Lost professor was telling me about Nas. You know what I'm saying? And then we, you know, we didn't meet during that time, but Ross Professor always spoke about him while we was working on my album. Like, yo, little young nigga from Queensbridge, yo, niggas, this nigga's like bananas. You know what I'm saying? So I should be like, oh, word? 
No, no doubt. I said, I know if you're saying it like that, I know it's about something. You know what I'm saying? Then me and Nas finally met. And then, um, like I said, I shot this um, material, the Def Jam. Um, Kevin Lyles, we all, you know what I'm saying? They were like, yo, the kid is good and this and that, but he sounds he sound too much like a G-Rap. He sounds too much like G-Rap. I said, he, he might be similar. I said, but he, he got his own identity. You know what I mean? So they they passed they passed on Nas, thinking he sounds too much like G Rap. But what what happened? Nas is work. Nas is in my house recording, and Search called me out the blue. Search called me like, "Yo, what's up, G? What you doing?" You know what I'm saying? I'm here here in my crib in the studio with um um working with niggas. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and, and um he was like, "Yo, I'ma come through." So he came through. I introduced him to Nas. Play some shit we uh we just have recorded on us, and then <clears throat> those two those two um exchange exchange map and all that, and then I went to Cali to work on my album, you know what I'm saying, so them linking up and all that shit just took place when i was when I was away, you know what I mean, wow, but it was wow, all good wow. with me because I wasn't trying to I wasn't trying to monopolize off Nas like that, you know what I'm saying. You was just happy for him to win. I mean, me, you know, I've done that a million times. I did the same shit with Pat Poos. When I met Pat Poos, you know what I'm saying? I was just trying to, I was just trying to get Pat Poos plugged in. You know what I mean? And and um, you know, no strings attached, no shit like that. If it if it would don't don't get me wrong, if it would have came to us getting down and doing business, it would have took place. You know what I'm saying? But when I hear dudes that's so talented like that. I just want to see dudes get on. You know what I'm saying? Like that's like first priority to me because this is how loyal I am to spitters. You know what I'm saying? And and dudes that's wordsmiths. You feel me? That's right, man. I feel the same mm -hmm. fucking way. I feel like mm -hmm. we have an obligation to this hip hop culture. This shit a religion. Mm -hmm. And if you hear somebody that's amazing, whether you have money attached mm -hmm. or not, you feel mm -hmm. obligated. To letting the world hear him, him uh, or absolutely. her, you feel like yeah. you know, this got to be because we so in love with music. We, we love the game that much, exactly, Joe. <laughs> Yo, that shit got, crazy, man. Cause I never heard nobody say it like me. I say I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I say it the same way. Um, all uh, rags to riches, right? Uh huh. You had this. You had this mafioso, uh, <laughs> all your shit was like, was like, Street life. you shoot off the fucking potato off the gun. Like you told, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in the streets of New York, dolphins are killing for morphine, TV screens, <laughs> follow the homicide scene. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and that was your thing. And, uh, what was your infatuation with like mafia and, and and gangster shit. It, it, Joe, it was just at that at, in those times. That's what was ha that's what what was happening. You know what I'm saying? That's when Gotti was going through all his uh, cases when they was when they was trying to pin him. You know what I'm saying? All this shit was going on. You know what I'm saying? So it was like life. What was happening in life in those times? It's like how could I not incorporate it in, in, into the art form? You know what I mean? This the shit going on around us. That's crazy. Let me tell you something. The symphony probably uh, top three. I for many years I called it the number one uh, collab song ever in hip hop history. Uh, for many years, you know, we've had another. We have band from TV. We got a couple of gems out there that this like, you know, uh, the symphony man, right? And these guys, right. they were bigger stars than you, G-Rap. Like, in the streets, in the underground, everybody knew you as the nicest. For, but you was right, you was coming behind Big Daddy Kane, and Shan was a superstar, and all these guys. Um, what, what, did you say, like, when I did The Enemy with Big Al, I, I, was, I, I was already blowing up. And he threatened me. He made me write my rhyme in his face. And he said, yo, I'm going to take all your fans. 
You just sweat gold. I'm taking all your fans. You better write the rhyme. And so with you, I would think that's how you felt. You felt when you was in there with uh on that symphony track with the whole Juice Crew. You know what? I wasn't really conscious of nothing like that, Joe. Like um, it that was just my um young warrior days, yo. Like in those times, though, I would keep a I would keep something under the sleeve. You know, at all times, like a long freestyle. You know what I'm saying? Just in case. Just in case a nigga try to call me out <laughs> at any given moment that I was going to have something to shred him. You know what I'm saying? So this was just those times. And, 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 um, and I happened to get called in the studio to do a record. I, I didn't know about it in advance. I was just told to go to Marley's studio by Fly Ty. He gave me a call like, yo... I need you to go over um, to Molly Cred. You know what I'm saying? So I went over there, and then Molly, yo, yo, G, I need you to get on this track. And then Ace and Craig G was already on it. So I just had finished writing one of those rhymes I told you about. You know what I'm saying? One of them shits you keep up the sleeve, just in case. <laughs> you know, so, that's crazy, man, because, you know, now, you know, when I make music, I just, I just, I, I just write to the song. I go for these hits. Whatever I'm doing. But I remember at that time, you definitely needed a freestyle in the sleeve in case somebody <laughs> tried to play with you. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. And, and you, went, you went crazy on there. And there's so many um, legendary quotes from every artist. You know, Listen closely. Intense and undivided. Put a quarter in your ass because you played yourself. <laughs> there were so many bars on that motherfucker that everybody was. And then the video is the Western theme. And... Right, what right. Yo, uh, let's give props to Marley Mall for a Absolutely. Such an incredible team. Where do you rate them in, 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 in producers? Do you rate them like top five of all time? <sighs> Top five. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I would definitely rate them in top five. Because um like like you said, when Juice Crew came out, Charger. Juice Crew was like the first example of of dudes that was compiled together that was in the clique, but they was a separate artist. At the same time, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so that was like that was like the first example of that. <clears throat> Yo, hold up one second, G Rap. I gotta get the charger because this whole time I thought I was charging this motherfucker. Gotcha, you, gotcha. You. Realize that the shit was never in the wall. This a fact, your <laughs> bullshit. Nah, we we good. Fuck it. We take, take your time. Yeah, nah, yeah, we nah, good. G Rap, because this shit trying to play games with me. Scram Jones on the set. <laughs> nah, I never had that happen in my fucking life, man. Don't fuck around <laughs> and let me get G Rap. G Rap like motherfucking Ben Laden. Pause. <laughs> that, uh, that motherfucker, that make G Rap don't come out for shit. Be like, don't fuck my shit up right now. Well, I got cool G Rap. I know everybody <laughs> else in hip hop. Journalism is sick right now. They like, yo, this nigga, he got cool G rap on this motherfucker. Yo, G rap, let me tell you something. I remember one time, uh, pun is double platinum, I'm platinum. Uh, right. And you had just was became a free agent. And, right. And I try to, I don't want to say sign you, but I try mm -hmm. to sign you and give you the biggest bag in the world. And I was like, yo, I swear to you, G-Rap, I, I was really going to try to produce these hits for you, make you the biggest. And then you made the move to Raucous, right? Not only right, love, right. but no matter what. Um, do you remember why you made that decision? Well, at the same time that we, um, that you, that you talking about, Joe, when we was, um, you know, talking about doing shit together and all that. It was actually, um, it was actually a little bit in war at that time. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, penalty was at the table at the time. The Rockets came at the table, 
You know what I'm saying? And then I had the situation with you. So that was that was just a matter of a nigga making the best decision, you know, available available or whatever whatever was on the table at the time. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and um and that's all that was. You know you know, based on our relationship, Joe, I would have loved to have did the shit with you. You know what I'm saying? We already had a solid relationship. We was already boys by then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, was we was already I, I, tight. I said family with you since the first time I ever met you and rest in peace, Bill Blast from Brooklyn. Yeah, so, no doubt. Like any time no I ever doubt. hung with you was me, you, and Bill Blast. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely. You know, rest and, in and, peace, and, uh, <laughs> Bill Blast, Buck Wild digging in the crates. Buck Wild sends his love, g rap my brother, no Buck doubt, Wild. Buck Wild, that's my boy right there. What up, Buck? You know, everybody loves you. I remember, uh, uh, the one night it was it was Big L passed away, and we did a tribute for him in Tramps, and I had brought you out with me, and motherfuckers, motherfuckers, they couldn't believe I brought G Rap on that motherfucker. You came up in there, and and you was killing that shit, um. Like and y'all y'all brought me out at the Apollo too. You and Pump brought me out at the Apollo. You remember that shit? We brought you in the Apollo. We did that dead in the middle of Little Italy like a hundred times. <laughs> and then you came out and motherfuckers lost their mind. Yo, we was like, yo, cause Kuji Rap, you know, there's always been this uh mystique to you. There's always been this privacy thing about you to where you wasn't everywhere. You wasn't, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 like you said, you do, you pick what you want to do. You've always been like that. Like, like you said, Joe, Kaze, Kaze Sose. Kaze Sose. <laughs> <laughs> no lie. And, and one of the other things, right? Like, you know, I don't know where, but you moved out of New York and you was one of the first cats to move out of New York. And mm -hmm. you know, like me, I've been living in Miami for 17 years. So when you moved right. out of New York, you was one of the first ones. And um, what was it? Just it's just hard being where you from and being that famous or something. <laughs> nah, Joe. I always wanted to. I always wanted to move around to see the world and all that, Joe. You know what I'm saying? That was one of the uh, my ambitions and uh, motivations of doing this shit. Is 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 uh seeing outside of where I was raised up at, you know what I'm saying? Seeing yeah. other shit, experiencing other experiencing other things, other atmospheres. You know what's crazy, G Rap? Right? The other day I called you up, and you know I don't bother you for nothing, and and you know that if you don't talk to me in ten years. The second you call Fat Joe, you get a response right back like this. Uh, absolutely. Like, I mean, like this. Like, I don't give a fuck. G rap call from me. I'm like, yo, it's yo. What's up, G? We good? What's up? You never need nothing, but you you know we just brush up and we we love each other. Uh, but that phone, cause cause you know you my brother. You've been there for me, uh, since day one. But the other day I called you up and I said, G, I know you don't really fuck with people. I know you don't really do these. These uh, podcasts and, and shit like that, but I need you. <laughs> and he said, Joe, I really don't, but for you, my brother, I'll do it. And I'm I'm beyond honored, but when I was speaking to you, you you told me, yo, Joe, I'm I'm into uh I'm Jewish now. But how how do you break that down to me, G? Well, I didn't say Jewish, Joe. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. Uh, I just said, I come to the realization, you know, saying some years back, you know what I'm saying, that, uh, you know, who we call African Americans here in this country is is the descendants of of the biblical Hebrew Israelites. You know what I'm saying? I know I know. Um, the boy Nick Cannon caught a lot of flack for saying it, you know, because he's on a tremendous platform. Who's you know what I'm saying? Nick Cannon. Oh, Nick Cannon said that, and then oh, that's what that, that was the controversy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, because he um, mentioned that the original Hebrew Israelites 
was people of color. You feel me? Mm. <clears throat> And so, and so, and so. But it, but it's not just him saying that. You, you know, if you study, you go, you read certain history books, you, you start digging. You know what I'm saying? You, you going That's all you're gonna see. You know what I'm saying? So if you apply yourself, you know what I'm saying? It's 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 documented so much throughout history. Yeah, you know, you know Sean. Saying? Sean went in uh in, in when he was in prison. He says. His his family are Hebrews, and you know he he took up the Jewish religion, you know, mm. and when I seen him when he first came out of jail, he had the curls and everything, and so you know oh, like me, maybe I'm ignorant, but I don't know too many black Jews. You you know what I'm saying? So, mm. and I live in a Jewish neighborhood where where I live is nothing but Jews. Sabbath on Saturday, all that. I only seen one black Hasidic Jew in my life. He live out here in Miami. I see him. Well, you well you have a you, well you have a Jewish you have a Jewish religion. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you have the religion and then you have the actual people. You know what I'm saying? That's genetically of that descent. You understand? You know what I'm saying? So anybody can say that you know, like hey, Whoopi Goldberg was um. You know, it was mentioned that she was Jewish. You know what I'm saying? But I think when they were saying that about her or whatever, I think she was coming from the religious aspect of it. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with Sammy Davis Jr. You know what I'm saying? They was they was uh, pretty much touching on the religious aspect of it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? That, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Sammy Davis definitely was ahead of time. And I know there's all type of Jews. They got Cuban Jews here, all that. Um, But, you know, mm -hmm. coming from the the number one gangster rap of all time. When you told me that, it, it, it shocked me. It, it, I know it's gro growth, and but but I was just like, damn, G Rod. Like you know, what does he know that I don't know? You know what I'm saying? Like it's just a, a joke. You know what I'm saying? You never stop learning, baby. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, we a long way from um, you know, we when we start doing this music thing. You know what I'm saying? So we like 30, 30 some odd years later down the line. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't know more than what you knew 30 years ago, that's a problem. You know what I'm saying? That's a, it, it, it'll be crazy to be spiritually stagnant to that point. You know what I'm saying? It's just like I'm sure you know a whole lot more than what you knew 30 years ago. Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course, man. <laughs> and that's how I took you know my daughter's like, yeah, she thinks yeah, she we, just talk, we, talk, we talk about one topic right now, but if we get into the vast majority of different oh. topics, there's, there's a ton of things that you know that you know now that you ain't know yeah, 30 like, years ago. Like, I ain't taking nothing from the youth or the young, ambitious brothers and sisters, but there's certain things you got to learn with age anyway, and with age comes wisdom. So there's, there, 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 it's shit I learned... You got to be on this earth long enough to learn the shit. You know? Uh, yeah. And, Absolutely. And, 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 and so when I come on here, I try to uh, inspire and give all the gems, you know, transparency. I try to tell them everything that, could, that somebody who need one little clue to just blow. Because when, when, when I was young, I always said, if Somebody I look up to, the Kevin Lyles, the, the, the Russell Simmons, somebody would have just said, yo, Joe, you wilding right now. You got potential to go here. And um, I would have listened to him. So that's why right. I remember Fat Joe just offers free information all the time. Just hopefully I could affect somebody in a positive way with all the trials and tribulations I've been through. Absolutely, absolutely. That's how me, that's how it's supposed to go. Let me ask you a question: Have you ever worked with Dr. Dre? I, I did work with Dr. Dre. I worked with Dr. Dre um, when King T called me to do a feature um, for a project, one of his albums. Uh, I don't remember. Don't ask me what the title of the song was because it was so long ago. I, I don't remember. But um, I worked with Dre then. You know what I'm saying? So guys, like uh, real cool, real cool dude. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
I heard he's recovering from his um his little ordeal he had. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad to hear that. You know what I mean? Because that's it's another right. yeah. legendary right legendary producer right there. Yeah, his right hand man hit me today and said, yo, the doctor, and I'm not the best friend with the doctor, but he said, the doctor want to let you know, Joe, he's doing great. He's ready to go back to the studio. Uh, he heard everybody's prayers. You know, right, and it's scary right. time because, you know, ecstasy just passed away from uh, no. me. And like you, you've been around before me. And it's getting really heartbreaking and crazy when you're seeing everybody starting to drop. Like, you know, uh, how do you feel when you're hearing all this shit? It's a crazy time. It's a crazy time, bro. You know what I mean? And um and besides that, you know, we all we are we all getting older. You know what I'm saying? And um and things happen. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's it just it just happened to be that three weeks, three to four weeks before ecstasy passed, I hit Jaw Lil out the blue. Mm -hmm. and, and I called him and I said, yo, Ja, because he, he's like, who this? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, Ja, is g back. Oh, yo, what up, G? You know what I'm saying? Yo, what's good, baby? You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, Ja, check this out. Y'all dudes just ran across my mind, and, 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 and I wasn't going to put the shit off till later or nothing like that. <clears throat> I wanted to hit you right now, right when y'all was a thought in my mind. And just to tell you, I love and appreciate y'all, man. And thank you for everything I did as Houdini. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and um, because I was listening to you like 11 years old. Front gate. What's that? Get, get ahead, g rap I'm sorry, get ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, I just called him. I just called y'all right? Today I got a FaceTime and it's AI, Bubba Chuck. Um. Mm -hmm. I want to get that Dre because they keep calling my phone. I can't pick it up. I'm on live. So, um, and AI told me the same shit you told Houdini three weeks ago. He just faced on me, brother. I love you. And we talked about all the good times. He said, I was just thinking about you so much. I told my wife, I got to call my brother Joe. And we talked about right. a lot of emotional shit. And um and just, you know, I told him, yeah, I'm gonna cry if you if, if you don't get the fuck up off this phone. You know what I mean? Because right. I, I met Alan Iverson. I only had one song out, I had that flow joke. I did a show in Virginia, and after the show, I never forgot. It looked like gangsters was coming up to me, and they all had army fatigue jackets and hoodie. He came up to me, he said, you know who I am? I was like, nah, I don't know who you is. And he was like, yo, I'm Allen Iverson, the number one basketball player, high school in the country. He wasn't even in college yet. So when I met him, I knew he was special immediately. I was like, all right, my brother. We kept in touch. And um, right. And he was like, word, yo, I, I don't think I used to brag like that. I said, nah, bro, you told me that the first time I met you. That's how I, but we always <laughs> was family. He said, well, Joe, you remember a story? I can tell you a story I remember. He said, what's up? He said, one day you sitting with me in front of my uncle's house and I had the new uh, Rolls Royce. And he said, you sat on the passenger side and you looked at the shit and you was like, yo, Bubba Chuck, you know I'm going to get me one of these shits one day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I can hear you saying something like that too, Joe. <laughs> yo, G, yo, G uh, you know we come from humble beginnings, man. You know, Absolutely. And, um, that that sounds like your style right there, though. Well, that's, that's, I believe the one million percent. And so I seen um his funeral. Kumo D performed at his funeral. They performed at the funeral. Houdini, that shit was fly. Uh, one day uh, when you did see me cry was, was at Punch's funeral. And from the first day I ever met Big Pun, he worshipped you on another level. And he got a style from you. I ain't going to front. He got his style from you, Big Pun. And, right. And so I'm looking at the casket. I, 
punters in the casket. I know Coogee Rap don't go nowhere. And then you walk mm -hmm. up. And I get chills saying that, but I would look at you and I was like, yo, you remember that shit, G? I remember that. Very and, clearly, yo. And I was like, yo, G, you was his man. You was his friend. I was like, I was really talking to Pun, like, yo, Pun G's here. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like... That that shit that shit hurt me to the core of my soul, Joe. When 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 Pump passed, that shit that shit, yeah, that shit fucked me up. You know what I'm saying? Yo, G, it was it was a, it was a lot of it was a lot of things, in that. You know what I'm saying? Like like you said, Pum was influenced by G Rap. That was that was clear. You know what I'm saying? Clear to anybody. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that that you know, really know hip hop and, 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 you know, spitters, you know what I'm saying? So when pun popped off, I was mad happy for pun, you know what I'm saying? Cause number one, I hear the inspiration I had in him, and, and, and he, and he took the ball, he raised the ball and then he, and then he took it to other levels, you know what I'm saying? So I was, I was like crazy happy to see that. Then he was linked to you. Me and you had a relationship for years at that point. You know what I'm saying? So I'm seeing this this young hungry dude come out and and, and, and um shock the world with his skill with his skill level, and then he's tied to you, my peoples. You know what I'm saying? So I and then I see this whole terror squad movement and this shit just blew up. You know what I'm saying? I was happy for you, Joe. I you know that. what I mean? I was crazy happy for you, bro. You know what I'm saying? And rooting for you. You know what I'm saying? Like my boy doing it, yo. You know what I'm saying? It was a good thing to see. But yeah, that that's the thing with the loss of pun, man. That shit rocked me. And, and um, I learned so much watching his documentary, things I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? It it it, it was really interesting. You know what I'm saying? I didn't I didn't know um puns um beginning. You know what I'm saying? But when I watched the documentary, it just, it was so informative and let you know so many things about the man's life that I, I was just blown away, yo. You, you know away. what's crazy with him is that the minute I met him and I put him in the, in the car, I had this Lexus 400 big shit, he come in. He told <laughs> his whole life story from the first, like, right. you know, there's certain shit, men got their machismo, men's got their tough this but he opened up to me uh it, it's really weird right because i, I could th only think of one thing right the one time and i don't want to make this sound odd but the one time uh you know me and Callie, we friends for almost 30 years no i know he met his wife right and mm -hmm. and the first day he met her he brought her not the first day but he brought her to meet me and I went in there and I started telling jokes. He said, yo, she gonna be my wife. This, I mean, Love he that. just met her two days before. And, and I think people know. And so I think like Pun knew when I met him, like, yo, this gonna be my big homie. We gonna ride out. So he was telling me shit, guys, people, definitely men wouldn't tell each other. You know, about being right. homeless, about what uncle, Shitted on him. What the, he was telling me everything in the first moment. Right. And I remember because I grew up with such um, you know, I grew up at a bad time. G rap. I, I grew up with animals. Real talk. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm knowing. No, I, I know you know your G rap, but animals to the point of like, um, I was reserved to where I was like, why is this guy telling me all this? First time I met him. But I realized later that it was like, he was like, he had that bomb with me, like, yo, you're going to be my big brother. I'm going to be your little brother. And so we're going to be transparent from jump. And I'm going to let you know right. how to go. And, um, and, but you definitely inspired the fuck out of him. And it really, it was a beautiful thing, but it really hurt me at the funeral when I seen you, his idol. And, and you know that you influenced him and you watched him go off and become Big Pun, greatest Latino rapper of all time. 
Absolutely. You know, my idol, or two idols, one is KRS, one is LL Cool J, right? Right. So we we all family, and but you know, I talk I talk to LL all the time. This is like my idol. Like when they used to play, the reason I rap is for LL Cool J and KRS. I remember when they would be like, brand new record by LL, I would pull the car over just to hear <laughs> the shit, like hear by the speaker. And so LL never told me, so I told him. I said, yo, what's it like having a guy like Fat Joe who running around here, you know, and, and you know at one time, you know, you know how we was running around, G. You know what I'm saying? Like You know I know. You know yeah, I know. Yeah, we, <laughs> it's a zero tolerance law. But with all the bullshit you might have heard, you might have been, damn, Joe did that. Like all the shit you might have heard, you always heard. LL Cool J's my idol. I love him. I, you, right. With all the dumb shit you ever heard, you still <laughs> heard Joe in the middle of ignorance. Go, LL. So I asked him one day. We went to dinner. He had his wife. I had my wife. I said, yo, L, like, what is it like, you know, having a guy that you know worship you, look up to you, running around here doing all this shit, and, you, and he, he's like, yo, Joe, man, I always had love. You know, I never needed the services, but I... I knew it was there if I ever needed it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, G, I'm gonna no get to my last question. And I gotta see uh -huh. the movie, the documentary. Are you working on this? I'm I'm working on it. You know, things kind of slow down now, you know, because of the obvious reasons. You know what I'm saying? So it stopped it, it stopped the um, movement of my camera crew. You know what I'm saying? Cause they in can they um Canadian based. Oh, cool. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so you know I they locked down you. that quarter. It's one huh? thing I need to ask you, and I love you, my brother. I need you to know that I love you. Um, I love you too, I family. Thank you for embracing me <laughs> and helping me live my dream. You know me starting out rapping, like I said, from the Bronx, young Puerto Rican kid. I met you. Yeah. You came, you came to my studio in the Bronx. You know, you mm -hmm. iconic. You go in there, you rap for me. I mean, it, it, it's just no way to describe what that means to a new up and coming artist. Shout out to Eric Sherman is on here on the check in. Um, Eric Sherman, what it do, baby? <laughs> I need to know a living legend. Eric Sherman came on here and was getting busy. Yeah, Eric Sherman, crazy man. That's my brother. I love you, Eric. You ain't the only one with green eyes. Yo, G Rap, <laughs> who is Cool G Rap's top five greatest of all time? Top five greatest of all time. Wow. Yeah, Melly I'm Mel. Not. Melly Mel. Rakim. King. KRS One. I, I sometimes I put myself in it, but I won't put myself in this one. Not, not this <laughs> no, time. I'll leave myself out of this You're one. You're ready to guard and see everybody know what the fuck is up. When Coo Coochie Rap got maybe half or more than half of any lyricist in the world, you're the, their favorite rapper. Like that, that that's just, just anybody who <laughs> thinks about lyrics. Cool you right. guys, their greatest rapper. So that they, you don't even have to say that. Well, you got Melly Mel, you got Rock Kim, you got Kane and KRS One. Then the next one I would say is Nas. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. Next one I would say is Nas. But that is a mean five, mm. my brother. This, this is this is not a discredit to other dudes. To other dudes, if it was a, a, a top ten, it's your personal top five. We know Jay Z's a uh, goat. We know uh, Snoop Dogg's a goat. We know uh, Eminem's absolutely. a goat. We know Tretch is a goat. We know everybody nice. Uh, absolutely. Cube, Scarface. Yeah, you was fucking, I, you them was fucking with, with Scarface years and years ago. Like, you was up on Scarface. I think you put me up on Scarface. Like, years I, I, ago, it's, you was it's up possible, on It's possible, Joe. I, w I was rocking Ghetto Boys early. Early, before they had the... Uh, the hit, you know what I'm saying? Um, 
Mom playing tricks on me. Mom playing tricks on me. Yeah, before they before they even came out with that, I was already rocking Ghetto Boys. Like, yo, these niggas is loony. Nah, you know nah, what I'm they, saying? They incredible. You know, I got an ill story. You know, my my best friend ever, uh, Tone Montana. I don't know if you got to meet Tone. It might. I didn't get to meet Montana. You got to I meet think Tone I Montana. Met, I met you right right around the time he passed. Like, I think he passed or something, because um, I remember you mentioned this to me. You like, yo, G, my man, Tony Montana, blah, 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 blah. This is like around the time me and you first start start talking, Joe. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? When you met Tony. Nah, I didn't. Oh, no, I told you he had just passed away. Yeah, yeah. You told me he had just passed away when we met. Yeah, you know. And, we, and we, when gonna... we start talking. I remember being But you know, I always team. ask you about your brother. How's your brother doing? My brother's good, man. The money man, Junie D. He's good. No God doubt. bless him, man. Uh, he's probably he, He's right the one that linked me and you up. <laughs> he love you. He love you, Coogee yes, Rap. You know what I'm saying? He love you. You know, my whole team, we all love you since day one. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Absolutely. And yo, but thank you for coming on here, uh, G Rap. I appreciate it. Thanks for you. having me, Joe. I know they're going to harass you. Everybody going to think you out here for interviews now. It's all good, g Rap. <laughs> you came to the big, big show first. Motherfucker cannot get cool g Rap for nothing. You know I am here for you. Anytime, no doubt, any doubt. place, anywhere, you call me, I'm there. You know that. Absolutely, Joe. You know I know what it is, baby. You hey, know what I mean? I love you, my brother. Stay up. I, I love you too, bro. All right, peace. They can't fuck with this, man. This is the culture. If you want to be heard by the realists in the game, you come here, man. We talk about the shit here, man. All these other floozy guys. <laughs> these little mumbo jumbo guys, man. We in the light, Joe. We in the light. Same way they, that, that's not this, man. This the real shit, authentic real shit. If you a hater, you lost. Let me tell you what Allen Iverson told me today. He said, Joe, let me tell you something. Every time I talk to you, I think about the movie The Bronx Tale. And he said, you know the part in The Bronx Tale where they say, you rather be feared than loved? He said, to know Joe Crack is to love Joe Crack. All you want to be is love, man. All you want to be is love. You love people. You want to be. I mean, bro, this shit unstoppable. Coogee Rap, they wish they had him. It's not a game here, man. You can lie to yourself all you want. And if you're a hater hiding in there, it's like, uh, what are you doing? Because we're all loving each other here. We're having a fucking love fest. We fucking love each other. Everybody, we come on, God damn, we made it. We made it through the day. It's 8 o'clock. Fat Joe's on. He's going to talk his shit. And you love it. Because you seen Coogee Rap by far. One of the greatest lyricists in the game of rap, period. By far. I told you his three. So, you know, if you go, what they call that shit, Dre, the algorithms or, you know, with the most compared like? Algorithms. All right. So if you don't, if you if you crazy and you don't know who Coogee Rap is, so his algorithms, the most algorithm. Algorithm, yeah, yeah. the most compared like and most influenced by him is Eminem, Nas, and Big Pun. These are guys who are like from the family tree, whether you want to believe it or not, of Kooji Rap. And so you don't know who I know. You don't know who I know. I'm sorry, but this is the truth. 
You don't know who I know. And my life's amazing. I thank you guys. Shout out my brother Rick Ross. Me and Drake went uh, to his house, chopping up with my brother. That guy is a Mofi. Okay? Like, and so let me tell you, people tell me all the time, my friends, they tell me, yo, Joe, you crazy. You crazy. No, Rick Ross is crazy. And so I have to stop and be like, yo, Dre, Dre's our only normal friend because Cal is crazy. We all crazy. But I said, yo, Dre, let me ask you something because he's on a roll. I said, yo, Dre, am I crazy like this guy? Rick Ross is standing right here. I said, am I crazy like this guy? And he's, and Rick Ross said, don't lie to him. He crazy. He crazy. He crazy, Dre. I said, yo, Dre, I can't be crazy. And Dre's like, nah, you crazy, but you know this guy, you know, Rick Ross is special. And so Rick Ross goes like this yesterday. He says, I never forget, I will never forget this in my life. It's not about what he said, and trust me, he says a lot. But it's just what I, it's, he hugged himself in the sun. And then he got these white teeth. And he go. <laughs> and I was like, I want to hug Rick Ross so bad. Like, I cannot believe <laughs> this guy's special, man. And, and, and so, you know, we're blessed, we're honored to be, uh, of course, the, 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 the by the way, guys, breaking news, the National Guard are in front of the Capitol Hill today. You know what I'm saying? A day later. Man. Breaking news, they're in front of the... They, they, they're talking about how they're there. Uh, uh, Un-fucking believable. Uh, what happened yesterday in life. Um, we're trying to cope uh, with what's going on. I want to see somebody go to jail. And not, matter of fact, hold on, let me take that back. Because I've never said that um, in my life. And I, I won't start that now. I won't start that now. I won't be wanting people to go to jail. I, that, that, I won't do that ever in my life. I take that back. God forgive me. That's not what I'm into. But you do know that Lolita Lebron got 48 years from Puerto Rico for that. So um, four people died in that shit yesterday. That's not a normal, let's just walk through the place. People got shot. Congressmen were ducking. Let me tell you something. Little kid walked in the church in South Carolina and aired out the whole church. White supremacists walked in the synagogue in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, I believe, and aired them out. Who's to say one of those good old boys who was having a standoff with the fucking courthouse police? There's got pictures of everybody having guns. I've never seen the police not shoot to the guys. If they would have aired out, if they would have let it go, if it would have just let it go, congressmen would have been dead today. Trump wanted to happen. No, no, of course he wanted that. But I'm saying, imagine you had a loose screw guy. A loose screw, just one guy. One guy. You cannot control. I don't give a fuck if you all read the same pamphlet. If one guy said, do, 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 you know how the shit go. Do, 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 do. And everybody, congressmen would have been dead today. So we're going to move on. <coughs> Positive vibes only. I'm talking to the light. Yes. Uh, God is great. God is so phenomenal. You're going to bring that sunshine back. I'm going to bring that sunshine back. I like that. And God is so great. And he's so great that today I was driving and I was looking at the sunshine and I was just praying and just so happy 
and 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 just, and just so amazing. And I'm just so blessed, man. And yeah, I'm in COVID with you, and I've been here with you, and all. A lot of our friends have passed away, and and uh, but um, you know, God is great, man. And so know that you gotta believe, you gotta stay the course. Everything's not easy. Remember Job. And everything in life is not failures, it's lessons to get you to the next step. And remember, this COVID is a terrible thing, but it's opportunity. It's time for you to get up and own your own business. It's time for you to express your greatness. And I see a little quote that going around um, Instagram that says, uh, if, you, if, if you ain't hustling the COVID, you ain't a hustler. And so <clears throat> you need to take advantage of this opportunity. You need to stay focused, positive, look towards the light, trust God. And that's going to get you out of here and get you a long way. And I'm here to tell you that it's living proof that you can do whatever you want. If applied to it. If applied to it. I told my little man, Trap. Trap and me used to play NBA 2K for five, six hours. He said, yo, Crack, I ain't see you on the NBA 2K. I said, you know, it's taking too much of my time. And if I want to get to the bag, I could use those six hours that I'm playing that NBA 2K to get to the bag. And so, you know, everybody got the same 24 hours in a day. It's what you do with your 24 hours that gets you to where you need to go. And so I, didn't, I wasn't trying to talk down at my brother Trap. I love him. But I was trying to tell him, give him a little, <laughs> yo, take this shit serious. Hey, buddy, I see you. Erica Ford, I see you. I see you tomorrow, man. Shout out to Coogee Rap for coming on here. And you don't know who I know. 